Hey guys, how you doing? This is your boy Rich from Rich TV Live, and you too can join the club at richpicksdaily.com where you can learn how to win and trade. Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, Dr. Peter McGaw, a PhD and CPG and a technical advisor with New Pacific Metals. How are you doing today, Peter? I'm doing very well, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Super excited to have you on the show and learn more about New Pacific Metals. And my first question is, New Pacific Metals is a Canadian exploration and development company with three precious metals projects in Bolivia. Can you tell us a little bit more about the company? Well, I mean, you you wrapped it up pretty well there, but the company was uh, founded by Refang, uh, who is the a geologist and uh, president of the company and CEO, um, a very successful serial on, entrepreneur in the especially in the silver mining space. Uh, he built Silver Corp. Um, and he, working with Carolina and Alec Zhang, recognized some opportunities in Bolivia a few years ago, and they were able to acquire them and move them forward. And the beauty is that all three projects are turning into being what look like very large, well-mineralized systems. Fantastic. Now we see you are an advisor to the company. What do you find most compelling about the company and why New Pacific Metals? Well, I'm an exploration geologist and I like to focus on big systems that have the potential to make material, potentially multi-generational mines. So I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't spend my time looking for small things and New Pacific has three projects that look like they have the potential to be extremely large, long-lived uh, deposits. It's hard enough to make a discovery in this business. It's hard enough to build a mine that you want to do it on a big deposit that will last a long time. And that's what gets me excited about New Pacific. So my next question is, what are some of the key benefits of working in Bolivia? For example, is Bolivia a mining friendly jurisdiction? I read about Cerro Rico as one of the richest silver mountains in the world, producing silver since the 1500s and still in production. How close is this from Silver Sand, one of NPM's flagship projects? Well, to answer your question in reverse, um, Silver Sand is 35 kilometers in a straight line from Cerro Rico de Bolivia. Uh, that puts it right on the white line in the middle of Main Street as far as the Bolivian tin silver belt is, called, is concerned. And, and Cerro Rico is a silver tin system, um, as is silver sand, uh, and a number of Bo Bolivia's other big mines. I mean, you mentioned Cerro Rico is the second largest silver system that's ever been found anywhere on the planet, second only to the Fresnillo district in Mexico. And that fits in with one of the things that's so attractive about Bolivia is that it's the second or third largest historic producer of silver anywhere in the world. Wow. So it has big, and when I say big, I'm talking about billion plus ounce uh, silver mines. Uh, as you noted, they have been in production since the 1500s. And you know, the country remains um, a very large producer. Um, mining is a backbone of their economy. So it's a very mining friendly place to be. There have been some political ups and downs uh, over the last couple of decades, but no worse than we've seen in other places and, and, and much better than a number of the other countries in South America, especially that are becoming less friendly towards mining from a geopolitical standpoint. Now, New Pacific recently received some very positive assay results from its Carangas Gold Silver Project. Can you talk a bit about those? Yes. Um, I was just at Carangas actually for the first time, I think about three weeks ago to the day. Um, and Carangas is a system that had historic high-grade silver mining on the surface uh, going back 
probably to the certainly to the Spanish era. I'm not I'm not sure anybody really knows how far back in the Spanish era. Uh, and New Pacific was originally exploring it as a silver deposit, and they put in a couple of deep holes, and instead of getting silver, they got like 300 plus meters of a gram to a gram and a half gold, which is starting to be big gold deposit kind of numbers. Now, it's very early days. There's only a few holes into this zone. Um, but it appears to be what we call a breccia pipe, which was this essentially a big volcanic vent. And we think it's probably a kilometer or more in diameter. And the whole thing is mineralized with, with gold. So this would be the target ultimately if it proves up for a bulk mining um, gold deposit with a significant silver credit. That's extremely, extremely exciting. Now, the Carangas project is very similar to Philo Mining's Philo del Sol project, which has yielded great results and caused the FIL stock to rise nearly 400% in the past year. Do you see New Pacific Metals heading in the same positive direction? You would expect me to say otherwise? <laughs> uh, you know, it's what, what, what can you say? Obviously, we, that's what we're in this business for is those kinds of returns. Um, and, you know, the market is what the market is. But uh, certainly the holes that are being pulled at Karangas are important enough that there should be a very strong response in the market. I, my crystal ball is no better than yours, but... Um, I would expect us to get a lift out of that. That sounds fantastic. Now, the company has also seen promising assays from its flagship Silver Sand project. Can you tell us more about the highlights from those results? And is the company planning to take this project into production? Well, the company, right, I mean, going into production is a stepwise function. So you start with exploration and then you advance to having a resource, then you do a preliminary economic assessment pre-feasibility and, and feasibility, and, and then ultimately based on the feasibility study, you go into production. Um, and so Silver Sand is at the building the, pre, the preliminary economic assessment stage. So it's so far it's passed all the gates that it's supposed to pass and it's, it's taking the right next step down the road. Um, most of the results that you've seen come out on, on Silver Sand have been uh, additional confirmation of the width and grade, which is very substantial um, for the, the Silver Sand project. The part that gets me excited is the exploration upside, because you can think of Silver Sand as this cloud of dispersed silver values, and they're they're good. They're you know, they're four to maybe eight ounce silver grade, so that's you know that's hundred dollar rock roughly. Uh, at the low end, and it goes up from there. Uh, and, the, and the metallurgical recoveries are very good. But what gets me excited is I want to know where it came from. Because if you look 35 kilometers away to Cerro Rico, you're looking at a system that has this kind of dispersed mineralization at the top, and then it just gets better and better as you go deep until it ultimately, at, at, at more than a mile depth, it starts to get, get tin rich. And that's not a bad thing in today's tin world. But uh, to me, everything I see at Silver Sand says there's a lot more to that system than the resource area that they're focusing on. I mean, the idea is to get that up and in production and keep looking for more. But my job as technical advisor is to keep the company focused on that exploration upside, to find the, the super high grade big zone that'll make real, really big money. Now here at Rich TV Live, we love to understand the team behind the project. So the company has a highly experienced leadership team with a strong track record of success. Who are your key members? Well, Rifeng, who's the president and CEO, is obviously the key member of the New Pacific team. Uh, it's always a joy to work with an exploration company that's run by a geologist. Uh, that means that they get, you know, we speak the same language. We can all talk about the what needs to be done technically, what needs to be done geologically. And Ree, frankly, has come up with several of these projects and is the one who was essentially the generator of the project. 
Um, his right hand man uh, is Alec Zhang, who's project geologist or supervising geologist, VP exploration. I'm not sure exactly what Alex's title is, uh, but he's the guy who's uh, got his boots on the ground every day uh, and rotates between the projects, keeping them moving forward. And he's built a remarkable team of Bolivian and Chinese and Canadian geologists and technical people uh, who are advancing the project. It's a, uh, it's, it's very well integrated. The people work well together. There's a lot of Bolivians who are very much involved in the company, and that gives you the, the home country uh, connections that you need when you're operating outside your own home, your own home turf. What should investors watch out for from New Pacific Metals in the coming months? Oh, you know, the, mo the most obvious thing is to look for continued progress on silver sand, additional drill holes. The PEA will be coming out uh, and you'll see advancement of the, the, the project towards being a mine. Uh, I won't say it's, you know, it takes several years to build a mine, especially the size that one's going to be, assuming it, it gets to that point. Uh, so you'll see consider continued news on that. Uh, from an exploration standpoint, we should continue to see dr drilling information coming out of Carangas. Uh, hopefully more of these very long holes with very nice, consistent gold grades in them. I've seen the core. I, I think I understand what kind of system it is. And it's the kind of system that can, that has, if it's got the kind of legs we think it is, uh, it will make a very it'll make a big mine too. That's going to take longer to evolve. So what you'll see is more and more of these big holes, I hope. Peter, last but not least, how do investors get in touch with the company? Well, sitting right beside you is a screen that shows our trading symbols, new P uh, on the New York NUAG in Toronto. Uh, they can go to uh, newpacificmetals.com and get the information there. Um, so it's pretty easy, but the easiest way is to just go on your favorite stock watch or whatever and punch in the trading symbol and that'll get you the information and link to the company website and the fundamentals and all the stuff you need. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Peter McGaw, PhD and CPG and a technical advisor to New Pacific Metals. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss here on Rich TV Live. In saying that, I believe this is a company that you should put on your radar and put on your watch list. N-E-W-P in America, N-U-A-G in Canada. And thank you for joining us today, Dr. Peter McGaw. It's been a pleasure, Rich. Thanks so much. And uh, look forward to following up with you at some point in the future and talk about some of the things that some of these forward looking statements that we've made, which we hope we can turn into history. Sounds fantastic. We'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you everybody for watching. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. If you like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. This is Rich from Rich TV Live with Dr. Peter McGaw from New Pacific Metals saying, have a nice day, everybody. We'll see you soon.